So for everybody that's sensitive and maybe doesn't want to hear my commentary, Google search the story, look it up, exit my video. For everybody else that wants to hear my con my commentary, and it's going to be very, very difficult to absorb. For if, So if anybody can't handle, um, what am I trying to say? If anybody can't handle the level that we go to when we describe these stories, then all I do is just ask you to exit the video. We're going to say some things that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities. So for everybody else, here's the story. East Cleveland Police Commander Scott Gardner said surveillance video shows Newberry's SUV following Bradley's car minutes before it was discovered burning near Savannah and Allen, let me see, Aleg, Aleg Henny, I, I can't pronounce that name, A-L-L-E-G-H-N-E, or excuse me, A-L-L-E-G-H-N-E-N-Y. I can't even, I can't even spell the damn thing. A-L-L-E-G-H-E-N-Y. How do y'all pronounce that? I can't pronounce that. Avenues in East Cleveland. East Cleveland Police Commander Scott Gardner said surveillance video shows Newberry's SUV following Bradley's car minutes before it was discovered burning near Savannah and Aleg Henny Avenues in East Cleveland. That's a tongue twister. I hate these tongue twisters. They say Paris had been shot in the head first, then both of their bodies were set on fire. The Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner ruled that Paul Bradley was alive when he was set on fire. Paul Bradley was alive, burned alive in a fucking car. Excuse my language. He was burned alive in a car and was set on fire. Detectives said robbery appears to be the motive. The Bradley's home in Bedford had been ransacked and then the inside was soaked with gasoline. They said Newberry and Bradley didn't know each other, but a mutual female acquaintance had informed Newberry that Bradley was well off and 14 year old Paris may have been used as a pawn to locate the money. What's interesting guys is what these people considered to be well off. That's the interesting part because we cut each other down just when we reach middle class. Think about that. These people were probably just doing well enough to be in middle class. Most people, if they miss two or three paychecks in a couple of months, most people would have difficulty trying to live or pay their bills. I can almost guarantee you that this father and this daughter probably were no different in that situation. So yes, they probably had more than the have nots. Yes. But that's what I'm talking about when it comes to the mindset that we're trying to correct in young men like this and this fool over here on the end. And I think there's actually a third person connected to this. They cut down a middle class father and daughter. So let's continue to talk about this. A timeline revealed that the father and daughter were removed from their home by force around 3.30 a.m., and the car was discovered burning around 9.30 a.m. Police said surveillance video shows Newberry's vehicle telling them at 9.12 a.m. Family member Diane, say, or Diane Bradley said Paul was a great father. He'd give the shirt off his back to anybody, and for somebody to do something like this to him is very unbelievable and unacceptable. He was so good to everybody. I just don't understand it is what Diane said. Next door neighbor, Jerry Sizzell, described Paul as a friendly guy. Paul was quiet, was a quiet guy and a good and a good neighbor. We talked about sports all the time. Sizel said he can't imagine what Paul and Paris's loved ones are going through. How could anybody do that to a young girl like that? I don't understand how people could be that evil to do that. Our, ho our hearts go out to them. My wife and I didn't sleep at all uh, at night, Chazelle said. However, the Bradley's loved ones have faith that they will get justice. And they quote this, and this is very powerful. We're coming for you. You can trust and believe that. God works in mysterious ways and you got it coming, Diane said. 
According to Commander Gardner, Newberry purchased the vehicle a few weeks before the murders. He returned the SUV to the dealership a few days after the killings, claiming there was a problem with the radio. Police said the auto dealer said the vehicle had been detailed inside, inside out when it was returned. So here we go. I think that one right there is Cody Gibson, K-O-D-I-I. -I. Yes, K-O-D-I-I -I Gibson, age 21, and the main suspect and one of the initial people that they were looking for in this investigation, his name was Ronald Newberry, which that's not Ronald. Let me see if I can get Ronald on the screen, which is going to be the dude on the left. Let me get you a good photo of him. That's the gentleman right there in the center. The one, with, the one that had his pants hanging off his butt. It's the one on the left. That guy. 23-year-old Ronald Newberry. They're both, at this point, charged with aggravated murder for the October 10th deaths of 39-year-old Paul Bradley and his 14-year-old daughter, Paris Bradley, both out of Bedford. Bond was set for each man at $5 million. A third suspect was arrested in the murders of the, of the man and his daughter in East Cleveland last month. And I think his name... Let me see if I can get his name for you guys real quick. Hold on. Because I wasn't 100% positive of his name. As we have 183 people watching right now, if you guys would, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. It'll share the show and let other people know that we're alive. So if you guys would, man, we are on third shift right now. If you guys would, please do me a favor and just hit the thumbs up. Simple thing to do. We got a couple people that have donated to the show. Every bit of that helps. And I want to make sure as many people have an opportunity to share in this story and find out what actually happened because I think it's absolutely insane. The fact that these young men cut down this father and this daughter and they used the daughter to get to the father, to get to the house because they felt like that these people were well off and you know how niggas think. How do niggas think? If you have, then we should have what you have. We're talking about the victimhood mentality. We're talking about the... um. The, um, what, what am I trying to say? The word is, um, damn, what's the word I'm looking for? When you feel like you deserve stuff. What? Damn, I can't think of the damn word. Let me see. Ronald Newberry and Quentin Palmer. Paul Bradley, excuse me. No, Paul Bradley is the father. Paris Bradley is the daughter. So we have Quentin Palmer, Ronald Newberry. And I don't think I got that third suspect's name. His name, oh, I think I think that was Quentin Palmer. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was actually. Here it is. The U.S. Marshal Service caught Quentin Palmer, age 26, on Northampton Road in Cleveland Heights. East Cleveland police said on Friday. So there you go. There's Quentin Palmer, age 26. And then you have Ronald Newberry, age 23, and Cody Gibson, age 21. I need to start putting all of these in one place so I can find them all. So y'all got to forgive me. Doing a lot of these stories is kind of hard to kind of keep track of all of this stuff. So a lot of names involved. And again, the bodies of 39-year-old Paul Bradley and his daughter were found burned in a car, East Cleveland, on October the 10th. Police say Paris was shot in the head before their bodies were set on fire. Paul Bradley was still alive when the blaze began, the Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner's Office determined. Detectives said the motive appears to be a robbery. The Bradley's uh, home in Bedford was ransacked and soaked with gasoline, and they used the daughter in order to try to get to the house. Entitled. Thank you, guys. Covetous. I like covetous. That's a great word also. Entitled. The entitlement mentality is what I meant. Natasha Bartley. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Vic is in the chat. I was wondering why y'all was putting Vic's name in there. What's up, Vic? Entitlement. The entitlement mentality is what we're talking about. Now, again, Ronald Newberry, Cody Gibson, and Quentin Palmer were already charged with aggravated murder in this case, and they appeared in court on Thursday, If and the bond was set at $5 million each. Okay? So I think I, think I got most of that story out. 
Yes, I did. Okay, so here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the video real quick, give you guys the fair usage, and I'm going to let you guys actually see these idiots in court. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. This tonight, the manhunt continues for an accused killer. Ronald Newberry is charged with shooting a 14-year-old girl in the head and burning her father alive. Five your side investigator Scott Knoll live outside the federal courthouse where U.S. Marshals have joined the case. Yeah, the U.S. Marshal here put it simply, catching this guy is a top priority right now. Heinous. That's how investigators described the torture and killings of 14-year-old Paris Bradley and her father Paul last month in East Cleveland. The man charged with the murders also summed up in one word, violent, says U.S. Marshal Pete Elliott. He's not going to stop doing what he's always done, and that's hurting people. Five on your side investigators discovered it's a history dating back to Newberry's teenage years. At 16, found delinquent for causing serious physical harm. At 19, charged with murder. A detective at the time already noting the teen's, quote, history of violence. That case. I wonder how was he let out if he was, conv if he had a murder charge? How did he get around that? Did y'all catch that? Time already noting the teen's, quote, quit for causing serious physical harm. At 19, charged with murder. At 19 years old, he was already charged with murder. And here it is, he's age 23. Mm. A detective at the time already noting the teen's, quote, history of violence. That case was later dismissed. In 2017, wow. records show Newberry pleaded guilty to carrying a concealed weapon and drug charges. And twice in the last two years, charged with beating the mother of his child. Court records show those cases were tossed out after the victim didn't show up for court. You hear that? The cases were tossed out because the victim didn't show up for court. I wonder why. And now charged with murder and on the run. Elliot believes Newberry is still in the Cleveland area. He says investigators are following leads, but he believes someone out there knows where Newberry is hiding. More than likely, he thinks he's going to be able to run and get away. Um, he's not, and it doesn't matter where he runs to or where he tries to hide. No matter what state it's in, we are going to get him. And uh, we're going to stay on this until we do apprehend him. I'll tell you guys this. When you're talking about the charges being dropped and all of that stuff, I'll tell you guys this when it comes to the police and the courts. So I'll say this to Cuyahoga County. You guys and your police, y'all can't screw this up. From what you, you'll see this here in just a little bit because you're going to hear the attorney speak for him. But I'm going to tell you guys probably how this little fool hashtag we're the fathers. Thank you very much. Lady Foots, you are so right. But I'm going to tell you guys this. What they can't do is they cannot violate this dude's rights, his constitutional rights. They have to follow this thing by the book, regardless of how they feel or what they're trying to accomplish. They have to follow this by the book. You know why? Because people like this that are guilty continue to keep getting out of the legal system when they should be in the legal system. Then you got people like Julius Jones in Oklahoma that should not be in the legal system and he is and still fighting for his life. That man shouldn't be in jail at all. And he's been in there since 1999. But you have a dude like this that is threatening witnesses to not show up to court and they don't. Getting out of murder charges, getting out of gun charges. And here it is, two more people end up dead. They have to start following their own fucking rules. Excuse my language. And that's to the police department out of Cuyahoga. Y'all can't screw this up. So this is what I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you guys one more video. And then I'm going to actually show you what the lawyers are already trying to get going for this young man. I don't know whether he's paying them or what, but 
I don't even know how much money could potentially be involved in this. 217 people watching. Thank you guys so much. Hit that thumbs up for me, please. Five million dollars each. Those are the bonds for two men charged with the heinous torture and murder of a Bedford father and daughter last month. Five year side investigator Scott Knoll was in the courtroom this morning. He's live now with new developments in this case. Police say this case has really picked up momentum since they charged the first accused killer last week. Today, that suspect and one accused accomplice were in court while investigators revealed the search for two more men charged with murder goes on. They're also indicating that this may be a specification where they would be seeking the death penalty. As 21-year-old Cody Gibson sobbed in court after learning he could face the death penalty, his mother adamant. I promise that's not my son, and I promise you all we'll find out the truth. She said, I want y'all to pay attention to this. What's the hashtag? Give me a hashtag for this. 226 people watching. What's the hashtag of the soda you dig? Hashtag what? Watch this again. Vacation where they would be seeking the death penalty. As 21-year-old Cody Gibson sobbed in court after learning he could face the death penalty, his mother adamant. His who adamant? One-year-old Cody Gibson sobbed in court after learning he could face the death penalty, his mother adamant. After learning he could face the death penalty, his mother adamant. No promise. That's not he could face the death penalty, his mother adamant. No his mother is adamant. Why should we care about his mother being adamant if he participated in a murder of a father and a daughter? Hashtag, where is his father? Hashtag, where is Ronald Newberry's father? Where is Cody Gibson's father? And where is Quentin Palmer's father? You guys are going to see this continue to play out. The fact that when fathers are not involved, this type of thing is prevalent. You see, mama's at court. Where the fuck is his daddy at? And sobbed in court after learning he could face the death penalty, his mother adamant. I promise that's not my son. And I promise you all we'll find out the truth. I promise you that's not my son. What do you mean that's not your son? Because your son is in hot water? Because he did something wrong, he made a bad choice because he didn't see any value in himself, because he didn't have a father in his life and a father in the home, and because his father didn't raise him to be a man and to earn his own instead of stealing from others. That's not your son. That's not the re representation of the son that you raised. Actually, woman, it is. So check this out. So for anybody that knows this woman and this mother, she can contact me. And she's going to hear from a man, from a real man that had his father in his life, that is a man and a father in his own daughter's life. And I will tell you, also coming from a counselor's perspective, the reason why your son did the messed up thing that he did, because he has a messed up mentality and a messed up image of himself. Because the other portion of his DNA, because you are the type of mothers and you are the type of people that raise these damn thugs and killers because you think that as long as you beat them, as long as you own it him, I'm on his case and I told him to do the right thing and I had all the food stamps and everything that this boy could ever want. I bought him all the Xbox and all the Jordans and all this and that and such and such. And you think that these trinkets and these things are going to make these boys turn into something productive. Well, guess what, woman? You're dead ass wrong. Your son committed a murder. He participated in a murder based on what we see so far. We'll see what the what the uh, actual indictment proves. But there is strong evidence against all three of these little idiots. You raised this. You raised a murderer. Why? Because you chose to lay down, A, either with a man that wasn't going to stay in his life, B, because you chose to lay down with a man that was not your husband, C, because you chose to not have that father in his household. The father was not in the household. This is going to be a representation of every single young man that has low self-esteem about himself because he does not have value in who he came from. 
the other half, the important part, the part that matters. You guys want to look at the macrocosm and say, hmm, well, you got people like LeBron James and hmm, Kevin Durant and all of these people that were successful, that did not have their fathers in their life. But you will look at the 10 or 20 or 30 that were successful, but won't look at the twin, 10, 20 or 30,000 that were unsuccessful because they didn't have their fathers in their life because of the fact that you have the prison population filling up every single day with three more black men that are about to go to jail for the rest of their life. And they are gladly building more jails than they are schools because you have the school to prison pipeline that's made for niggas like this. Single mothers. They're waiting for your boys. That concrete is hard. That steel is cold. That air stinks. And they're going to be breathing that shit for the rest of their life. Why? Because you didn't give a damn except for how you felt and what you wanted to do at that time. It's your fucking fault. If you want to change the trend, then you have to change the trend at the foundation fix the foundation you might be able to fix the problem when your house is not built on a solid foundation then it is bound to fall apart i've proven you guys this over and over again look back at the way that the black community was built back in the 20s 30s 40s and 50s before the great society told us a better idea would be to not have the father in the house Take advantage of the government benefit. Hashtag babies for benefits. This is what they told you would be better. Well, it is better for the people that are investing in the prisons. I'll say that again. I'll say that again. Am I going to get flaggied? Am I going to get flaggied on my channel? Let me say that again. It is beneficial for you to have babies for benefits for the people that invest in the prison system. For the people that take their tens of millions of dollars and buy a prison, they're going to make money for life. Their children are going to make money for life. Their children are going to make money for life. Why? Because we have generation after generation after generation after generation that is going to go from school straight to prison. Cheap labor forever. It is the new slavery and you bitches are putting them in there. Because you don't care because of what you can get in the short term. Look at the long term. You're bearing babies. Nine months of labor, excuse me, nine months of carrying a child and going through hours of labor to push him out in this world. You claim that you love him. You give him an, a stupid ass name. Then you turn around and expect for these boys to be productive without a father in the home. This is probably about the realest thing that I've said in a long time. Is it not, guys? 270 through... 271 people watching. Do y'all feel me? If you can't hit the thumbs up, share the show for your boy. Donate to the show. I'm just saying. If I'm speaking to your heart right now, if you've never donated to a show before, start here. Start now. This is the message that we're pushing out there. I put my life on the line for the words that I say because I believe in what I say because I give this same thing to mine. I'm watching how productive my children are being. I'll protect my children with my life. I'll protect my family with my life. I will protect my words and stand on my words with my life. That's what fathers do is they protect, they defend, and they build. That's why you women need these men in the household because they protect, they build, and they defend. If you want good men, you have to raise good boys. The boys have to have balance. Ying, yang, push, pull, mother, father. It's the way it fucking works. What makes you guys think, well, well, that, well, that's your mama. What difference does it make if that's your mom? What difference does it make, right? Well, she gave birth to you. Well, how the fuck did she give birth if she didn't get the seed from the man? So are you trying to say that the man is insignificant in that process? Because guess what? If the man stops providing his seed, what woman will bear fruit? Uh-oh. Mm. remember guys don't get mad we're trying to change the mindset again i'll say it again what women will bear fruit if not for a seed the man provides no seed the woman has no fruit that she bears guess what 
We all die without each other. This is teamwork. Teamwork make what? The dream work. Is that not the way it goes? Yin yang, push, pull, mother, father. It's the only way that the world works. So for you people that continue to think that you're going to raise these boys and that they're going to be productive, well, yes, you're going to have one in about every 100,000 that are going to make it and be something. While the rest of them are going out robbing each other, stabbing each other, killing each other, murdering each other, burning each other. And they all are going to end up in the prison system. They've already got bunks ready for you. They've already got prison identification ready for you. They've already got security ready for you. They've got graves ready for you. We live, we die. The difference is, is how are you going to be in this world, in this free world? What is gonna be your legacy? What legacy are you leaving? We're writing a book to our lives every day. What is the words that you're writing in your book today of your life? What are people gonna say about your life? I robbed and I stabbed and I killed someone and I burned someone and now I'm in jail for life. End of your story. Jail for life. Hell of a story. Hell of a story. She says Gibson met Ronald Newberry three or four months ago. Today, both men were in court, accused of forcing Paul and Paris Bradley from the family's Bedford home last month in what investigators say was supposed to be a robbery. But when the group couldn't find the cash, police say things turned violent. Uh, they were essentially torturing and attempting to get information from Paul and Paris. Police say that went on for six hours. Eventually, investigators believe 14-year-old Paris was shot in the head in front of her father. They say he was burned alive along with his daughter's body inside a rental car on this abandoned lot in East Cleveland. Part of a calculated crime that Gibson's mother insists he had nothing to do with. I didn't raise a child like this. And when it's all said and done, when the officers and everyone involved in this case do their jobs, they're gonna see that he didn't do this. We will see, but I would like to see where's his father at. Even in the midst of this right now, where's his biological father at? Regardless of where he's at, I'd like to know where he's at. But detectives say physical evidence links both Newberry and Gibson to the crime scenes. Now they're hoping to quickly track down two others charged but not yet arrested. Police say both have violent criminal histories and one has already threatened witnesses. Very big concern. That's why uh, we, we want to get these two additional parties uh, off the street as soon as possible. Police are not releasing the names of the two men they're looking for. They also tell us two other people could be charged. Well, we've already got those names. We've already got those names. Again, that's Quentin Palmer, age 26, Ronald Newberry, age 23, Cody, K-O-D-I-I, -I, Gibson, age 21. Those are the three men. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a video that was a little bit difficult to find, but I found these videos. There are two videos. We didn't get the third one, but we have two of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys these videos. We've already shown the fair usage. This is the people that are in court. This is Ronald Newberry, the first video. I want you guys to listen to this court session. This is an initial hearing, and then they're gonna show Cody Gibson, which is the one that you guys saw crying. I just want you guys to see how sick this is. I like that elite class truck and said I love it when they say I didn't raise him like that. Exactly. If you didn't raise him like that, then who raised him? I got you elite class truck. Right, gentlemen, um, a few important things on Jeff Dawson. Before we begin, I want to make sure you understand what some of your primary rights are. First of all, you have a right to an attorney. I believe you've had a chance to speak with the defense attorney here, or you may have your own attorney. If you have not had that opportunity, we will make sure you get that opportunity. You also have a right to remain silent, which would be expressed through your attorney, which means you do not have to say anything when I call your name. You may be asked to come to the microphone with your hands visible. Um, if that's able, or if you're capable of having your hands visible, then that's what we would ask you to do. Otherwise, you do have that right to remain silent. 
And then you have a right to what's called a probable cause or a preliminary hearing. That's a hearing for the purpose of the city to give evidence to the court that a felony was committed in this city and that you are connected to it to the point where I have to send it to the felony court to be resolved, meaning the felony cannot be handled in a misdemeanor court such as this one. When you speak with your attorney, the attorney will let you know that you can either have that hearing, you can request that hearing formally, or you can waive that hearing. If you waive the hearing, you're not admitting any guilt. Basically, you're allowing the case to be sent to the county for further proceeding. If that takes place, I will also set a court date for you so that you know when to appear at the county for your further proceedings. Also, I will set a bond for you here. Um, we will hear from your attorney as well as the city's representatives in regard to the bond. Um, and if you are electing to have a preliminary hearing, it has to take place within 10 days if you are still in the jail. If you are able to make your bond that is going to be recommended and set, we have 15 days to have that particular hearing. We will let you know all that when we call the cases based on what the request is from your attorneys. First case is 18 CRA 01163, the City of East Cleveland versus Ronald Newberry. Good morning, Council. Good morning, Your Honor. For the record, K Ranky 216-374-7660. Thank you very much. I have here two counts. The first one is a violation of 2903.01, a charge of aggravated murder. And then there's a second 2903.01, charge of aggravated murder. Those are felonies of the first degree, where you're looking at at least 3 to 11 years in prison, up to a $15,000 fine, depending upon the specifications added to the charge. It could be life in prison or death. It looks like in this particular situation, they have indicated that life um, is a possibility as well as death. They said the potential charge could be life in prison as well as death. He's hearing that, and he's just like, all right. And what's up, Sinead? How y'all doing, man? Good morning, good morning. Good night to everybody that's out there. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. We got almost 300 people watching. If a couple more people will hit the thumbs up. I know the audio is a little bit off. I had to kind of adjust it and bring it up so you guys can actually hear it because I can hear it good out the left side, but you guys can't actually hear it. So I had to adjust it a little bit so you could actually hear it. The complaint states specifically that on or about the 10th day of October 2018 in the city of East Cleveland, Ronald Newberry did knowingly, purposely, and with prior calculation and design cause the death of Paris Bradley while committing or attempting commit to commit aggravated robbery and aggravated burglary. The second charge states that on or about the 10th day of October 2018 in the city of East Cleveland, Ronald Newberry did knowingly, purposely, and with prior calculation and design cause the death of Paul Bradley while committing or attempting to commit aggravated robbery and aggravated burglary. Counsel, in regard to the probable cause hearing. Judge, uh, I have gone over with my client. We would demand a preliminary examination. Uh, he has indicated so on the form. I don't know if that was by design or if that was his choice to walk in there with that raggedy ass t-shirt with his pants hanging off his ass. Is it, Was that his choice or what? I don't know. Uh, we uh, voluntarily surrendered notified that there was an active warrant. I did call the detectives, made arrangements, and turned them in voluntarily to the East Cleveland Police Department last Thursday. Um, we were informed originally that the court date was going to be on Tuesday. Uh, it was subsequently pushed back until today. Um, we have been, I have accompanied Mr. Newberry to the detectives to speak to them on two occasions, as well as provide. Now this is the part that you guys need to pay attention to. So I wanna make sure that everybody can hear this. Is the audio good? Because this part is about to get real interesting because I think this might be where this young man tries to get off on all of these charges and walk away from this scot-free. Mr. Newberry to the detectives to speak to them on two occasions, as well as provided additional information in an effort to cooperate. Um, it is my understanding that on at least three occasions, while he's been in the city jail outside of my presence, the detectives have brought him up, spoke to him in his jail, attempted to speak with him, um, which is certainly a violation of his attorney-client privileges. Did you guys hear that? Well, she's claiming is that 
the police officers came and tried to interview him, violating his uh, his uh his privileges to be able to speak to an attorney first. So they tried to get him to talk first. So anything that he said, they were trying to use against him. That might backfire on them if he requested an attorney and they didn't allow him to get one first and request counsel. In addition, Judge, we made arrangements for his mother at who was- Oh, Lady Foots, don't worry about it, sweetheart. Just hit that thumbs up and share it with somebody. All of that helps, I promise you. We are a team here, man. We are a team. We are over 300, guys. Thank you guys so much. Hit that thumbs up for me. Not a suspect in this case, as well as his girlfriend to speak to the detectives. Um, his mother was arrested. Mr. Newberry was told by the- They said they would not, the girlfriend wasn't allowed to speak with the detective. When the mother requested to speak to the detective, she was arrested. Detectives that his mother was going to remain in jail. They threatened his mother based on what the, what the attorney is saying, that she would stay in jail if he didn't talk. Until such time that he confessed, um, his mother has been subsequently released. And then after he didn't say nothing, they let his mom out of jail. Uh, we are demanding a preliminary hearing, but I would ask for the record that there be no contact with my client outside of my presence by any law enforcement. We've also spoken to the prosecutors who were present last Friday. They are also aware of my representation. They could very well be lying. Absolutely. You're right. There's Gail J. What's up, Gail J? Thank you for donating to the show. I appreciate that. Thank you, Counsel. So first of all, what we're going to do is set the preliminary hearing for Monday, November 19th, and I believe we set that time for noon. Yes. Thank you, Judge. Let's do that. And counsel, you heard about the mother and you heard about his girlfriend. You guys still haven't heard from any fathers. Uh, appreciate your cooperation and the involvement you've been. steps you've taken to make sure that your client has been presented to the East Cleveland Police Department, so I appreciate that. And I don't think it's unreasonable to make that request on the record and even in the presence of um, the court that there be no contact with your client. So I he just told them and told the state there is to be no contact with his client unless the attorney is there. That is their legal right. He might be able to get off of this if they violated his rights. And I think, man... That's why I said, I hope Ky Cuyahoga, man, I hope they did not fuck this up. I do understand that. I'm sure the city understands that at this point. That's an attorney, it sounds like, Billy Goat Gruff. That doesn't sound like a public defender. Public defenders can be competent, but most of the time they're not. And they're usually they're not doing what's in your best interest. Um, so we should not have any more problems in that regard. Um, <laughs> Detective, or Madam Prosecutor, to the issue of bond. Hi, Ryan. Good afternoon. Uh, for the record, Detective Joseph Marche, CD Cleveland, signed the major crimes in the Detective Bureau. For you, uh, Ronald Newberry, black male, 23 years of age. Uh, we're, uh, we're not going to put his address out today. Uh, we're also not going to put any uh, evidence out there today um, due to the fact that there is media here. Uh, detective's bond recommendation is five million. They're recommending a bond of over five million dollars. Both are lawyers. Oh no no no! I know I know Val. I know I know I know. I promise I promise I know I know that. What I was saying is that the difference between a public defender and a personal attorney is the fact that public defenders are attorneys, but generally they're not gonna they're gonna do what's in the best interest of both people, both parties. Public defenders do not defend you as well as a private attorney. I can tell you that from personal experience. I can tell you that from Julius Jones, his story. I can tell you from dozens of examples that you, if you're going to go into a court, you do not want to depend on a public defender. How many people out there know what I'm talking about? Let me say thank you to, uh, to Brian S for sending a donation through. Thank you very much. Also to, um, I know this name. I think this is all exclusive. Thank you very much T to the husband and wife team. Leroy Honeycutt, Angel Honeycutt. Thank you very much. Barbara Placence on behalf of late. Okay, got you. Thank you very much. I got you. Thank you, Barbara. I appreciate that. Matter of fact, where is Ladyfoot's at? I'll fix that here in just a moment. 321,770 cash surety. And 
number is significant to the victim. Paul Bradley. Counsel. Judge, for the record, based upon the charges, I would leave the issue of bond to the discretion of the court. All right, and I think what's important here is a couple of things. One is that obviously there's no more contact. We want to make sure that's done correctly and properly. We're going to set the prelim for Monday. Um, and because of that, I think the bond recommendation. I don't, I don't see an adjustment that I would make that would make a big difference as far as Mr. Newberry being released today. So I will keep the bond set at the five million three hundred twenty-eight thousand seven hundred seventy dollars and set the preliminary hearing for Monday at twelve. Minutes. Thank you, Judge. I just will ask to raise the issue of bond again after the preliminary hearing on Monday. Absolutely. Thank you, Judge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rob. Ready for the other one? Did you notice the difference in his demeanor? Did everybody take notice of that? Night and day difference. Now I want you guys to look at the gentleman by the name of Cody Gibson, K-O-D-I-I, -I, since the mama wanna put two damn fucking eyes on the back of his name. Cody Gibson, age 21. Look at the difference between Ronald Newberry, who you just saw with his pants hanging off his ass, and this is Cody Gibson. I want you guys to watch this. We got new people in the building, 321 people watching. If you guys would, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. It'll share the show with others. Let them know that we're live. Can you guys come and do that for me? Hit that thumbs up for me. This is the difference. Watch this difference. Driving under suspension is punishable by up to a $1,000 fine because that's the maximum of a misdemeanor charge. So I'm going to let you guys know what's going on. They're going to talk about him driving a car under suspension, all of his violations on that, and then they're going to talk about the uh, the the murder indictment. Could get jail time. Um, actually, the offenses of driving under suspension are occurring uh, to the extent in this particular county that the the jail time has been imposed by some judges, as well as up to a maximum fine of a thousand dollars. Princess X said he thinks he'll get off on a technicality. You are one hundred percent right, and he might be right. If any of that was even true. Two points on your license and an additional suspension. Also on the ticket is a stop sign and reckless operation as well as a no seat belt. Again, this is the second gentleman. They're also marked on the ticket that you did not have insurance. That's important because you must have insurance to drive in Ohio. If you do not have insurance, that initiates the immediate suspension of your license. But counsel is going to enter a plea of not guilty on that particular charge on your behalf. And then also there's 16 TRD 01027. That's a driving without a valid license and a stop sign from May 8, 2016. That was also marked no for insurance. Everything that I mentioned about the driving without a valid license still applies to this particular case too. We're going to maintain not guilty on both of those. We're going to set those out so that we can deal with them at a later time with this particular attorney who will be present. And then we have the felony case, which is 18 CRA 01162. City anytime that, just to let you guys know, anytime that they say CR dash, that's criminal. Don't, don't judge me that I know that. <laughs> yeah, y'all can judge me. CR dash is always criminal. So here it is. This is the second guy. Houston versus Cody, Cody Gibson. And this is alleging an aggravated murder and two counts in violation of 2903.01. Alan Walker said the man took a, a set up girl to his house and she thought he had money. That is absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. They tried to rob him. This would happen over a six hour period when they didn't found no money. They shot the girl and then they took the dude while he was alive, put him in a car, burned him alive. They, because it was three suspects. Again, Quentin Palmer, age 26, Ronald Newberry, age 23, Cody Gibson, which is who you're looking at on the screen right now, age 21. Listen to how he responds in court. 
In regard to those particular cases, you have a right to remain silent, which means you don't have to say anything at all. You do have an attorney present. If you wanted to hire your own attorney, I can give you that opportunity. You also have a right to what's called a probable cause or a preliminary hearing. That's a hearing for the purpose of the city to indicate to the court that a felony was committed in the city of East Cleveland and that you are connected to it to the point where I have to send it to the county because this is a misdemeanor court. You can elect to have that hearing or after speaking with your attorney, you can elect to waive that hearing. If you waive the hearing, you are not committing any guilt. Instead, you are just allowing this case to be sent to the county where we will continue in this regular manner. Also, I will set a bond for you. And if, depending upon how the case goes, I may end up also setting your next court appearance after I hear from your attorney. You had a chance to speak with counsel, Mr. Humphrey, correct, sir? Yeah. On behalf of Mr. Gibson, counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to have the opportunity to uh, talk to Cody and advise him of his right to a preliminary hearing. You know what? And I, I want to do this. I just want to make sure you did speak with him because then let me still read the actual charge. Thank you for that. Um, Mr. Gibson. And I'm assuming that that gentleman that you just saw on the screen, that was probably the public defender. Who said that? Alan Walker said Newberry just got shot 16 times last year. Are you kidding me? Seriously? He got hit 16 times? No, this is not the hour long one. These are these are the short videos, Chaz. Yes. These are very short. That first one was the longer one. It was eight minutes. This one's the uh the six minute video. So they're short. He was shot. I wonder, but you know what? I wonder why he was shot 16 times. Is he in a gang? Is it because he was robbing somebody? I wonder what the hell he did. Because if somebody shot him that many times, makes you wonder what he did. The charge is the aggravated murder charge. And on this, they put a specification that could indicate, as opposed to just facing the possibility of three to 11 years in prison, they're also indicating that this may be a specification where they would be seeking the death penalty and or life in prison. The maximum fine for these types of offenses would be $25,000, could be as low as $15,000. If it's an aggravated murder, that ends up being the way the case is resolved, that could be a $100,000 fine. The complaint states specifically that on or about the 10th day of October 2018 in the city of East Cleveland, Cody Gibson did knowingly, purposely, purposely, and with prior power. He's crying now. You're crying after you do some stupid shit. Right? 351 people watching. If you guys are watching, if y'all are brand new, if you haven't been here before, do me a favor. Welcome to the Soda You Dig. We advocate for children first here at the Soda You Dig. These gentlemen are accused of shooting a mother and a father and burning them in a car because they were trying to rob them for money. They used the girl as a setup because the girl they thought the girl would lead them to where they lived and they took them to this middle class home and held them up for six hours, shot and killed the girl in the head, put, took them in a rental car out in the field somewhere and set it on fire and burned the father while he was alive and burned the daughter while she was dead in the car. Three dudes by the name Quentin Palmer, age 26, Ronald Newberry, age 23. And you are now looking at the crying, whimpering, young black man by the name of Cody Gibson, age 21. We do not have sympathy for criminals here at the Soto You Dig. From a father's perspective and from a representative from the black community, I'm speaking against violence that we tend to commit against everybody, including those who look just like us. That father that he murdered was about my age. That daughter that he murdered was about my daughter's age. That's why I carry and I pack my weapon 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even in my sleep, you don't want to test me because I have mine on me. It is my God-given right, my Second Amendment right to carry my weapon just like everybody else that has the right to do so, that has their license to do so. Protect yourself at all times. 
The black community is messed up. We commit violence at a high rate. So there's a good chance that a lot of these individuals weren't raised with their fathers. And there is a high pop probability that these gentlemen could potentially make you the next target. Just throwing that out there. Just be cautious and be careful. That's all I'm saying. People don't want to judge, judge a book by its cover. It's up to you. Just be careful. Population and design caused the death of Paul Bradley while committing or attempting commit to commit aggravated robbery and aggravated burglary. There's a second count with the same possible penalties stating that on or about October 10th, 2018 in the city of Cleveland, you did, Mr. Gibson, knowingly, purposefully, and with prior calculation and design, cause the death of Paris Bradley while committing or attempting to commit aggravated robbery and aggravated burglary. Mm -hmm. Council now. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, I did have the opportunity uh, to talk with Cody about his right to a preliminary hearing, uh, as well as the evidence that was presented to me in the conversation. I think that's the the uh, the, the uh, public defender over there that's talking right now. Hopefully you guys can hear that. I've turned the volume up as much as I can. Hit the thumbs up, please. We almost got 400 people here. Uh, with the assigned detective on the case. Uh, based off of that conversation with Cody at this time, he's going to waive his right to a preliminary hearing, uh, maintains his absolute innocence in this, uh, and we would defer to the court regarding bond. Uh, so with the waiver of the preliminary hearing being accepted, we're going to set an initial appearance for Mr. Gibson. It will be November 19th, which is Monday, 945 on the 12th floor of the Justice Center. I'll give you that reminder, sir. Detective, the issue of bond. Judge, for the record, Detective Ken Lundy, uh, with respect to Mr. Cody Gibson, 21-year-old black male, um, seven cycle arrest history, uh, with one conviction, uh, we're going to respect the request of bond of five million three hundred twenty-one thousand seven hundred seventy dollars uh, consistent to his code of ethics. We'll confirm the court now. So I will keep the bond consistent to the bond of these set for the code of ethics. Detective, that number again is five million. $21,770. So again, the bond will be set in that amount. The court date is from Monday. Also, I want you guys to hear what he said his bond was. Listen to this again. It was $5 million and something. Check with that number again. It's $5 million. $321,000. 770 dollars <laughs> wow so again the bond will be set in that amount the court date is from monday um, and as far as the looks like we have those other cases that will be set out counsel are there are any of the traffic cases no they're not they're all on the same day so that's fine <laughs> so you have some good luck you can have a seat what difference did he think that all that crying was going to make? Seriously. You, did you notice that? Let me back it up a little bit. Let me show you this. Look at this again. Y'all tell me what, look at this. Does it look like this dude didn't go over to try to give this man a hug? Like he wanted this white man to hug him? Look at this again. Watch this. He wanted his mama. That's right. Look at this. Tell me that he did not want this white man to hug him like his father. Watch this. Look at that. Did you see that? He shows real remorse. Most criminals do. Most criminals do. Look at this again. I'm going to back it up just a hair. Look at this. He leans over. Because he thought that that white man was going to hug him like his father. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? He's waiting on him to get it. He was waiting on him to hug him.
driving him to Man. When I'm right, guys, I'm right. Told you guys that these boys need fathers in their lives. We almost got 400 people watching. Please, just a couple more people hit the thumbs up. Let's just cross over the threshold of 400 just for the hell of it. $5 million each. Those are the bonds for two men charged with the heinous torture and murder of a Bedford father and daughter last month. Five year side investigator Scott Knoll was in the courtroom this morning. He's live now with new developments in this case. Police say this case has really picked up momentum since they charged the first accused killer last week. Today, that suspect and one accused accomplice were in court while investigators revealed the search for two more men charged with murder goes on. They're also indicating that this may be a specification where they would be seeking the death penalty. As 21-year-old Cody Gibson sobbed in court after learning he could face the death penalty, his mother adamant. I promise that's not my son. And I Y'all hit that thumbs up, please. Where they would be seeking the death penalty. As 21-year-old Cody Gibson sobbed in court after learning he could face the death penalty, his mother adamant. I promise that's not my son. And I promise you all, we'll find out the truth. She says Gibson met Ronald Newberry three or four months ago. Today, both men were in court, accused of forcing Paul and Paris Bradley from the family's Bedford home last month in what investigators say was supposed to be a robbery. But when the group couldn't find the cash, police say things turned violent. Uh, they were essentially torturing and attempting to get information from Paul and Paris. Police say that went on for six hours. Eventually, investigators believe 14-year-old Paris was shot in the head in front of her father. They say he was burned alive along with his daughter's body inside a rental car on this abandoned lot in East Cleveland. Part of a calculated crime that Gibson's mother insists he had nothing to do with. I didn't raise a child like this. And when it's all said and done, when the officers and everyone involved in this case do their jobs, they're going to see that he didn't do this. But detectives say physical evidence links both Newberry and Gibson to the crime scenes. Now they're hoping to quickly track down two others charged but not yet arrested. Police say both have violent criminal histories and one has already threatened witnesses. Very big concern. That's why uh, we, we want to get these two additional parties uh, off the street as soon as possible. Police are not releasing the names of the two men they're looking for. They also tell us this tonight the manhunt continues for an accused killer we've already got the names and again the names are quentin palmer age 26 ronald newberry age 23 cody gibson age 21 we got 408 people here if you guys will while y'all are here hit that thumbs up we're almost done ronald newberry is charged with shooting a 14 year old girl in the head and by the way if anybody hasn't donated to the show before or if it's been a long time since you donated you guys can hit the paypal.me forward slash dj just jok i'll read your donations on the show live this tonight, the manhunt continues for an accused killer. Ronald Newberry is charged with shooting a 14-year-old girl in the head and burning her father alive. Five year side investigator Scott Knoll live outside the federal courthouse where U.S. Marshals have joined the case. Yeah, the U.S. Marshal here put it simply, catching this guy is a top priority right now. Heinous. That's how investigators describe the torture and killings of 14-year-old Paris Bradley and her father Paul last month in East Cleveland. The man charged with the murders also summed up in one word, violent, says U.S. Marshal Pete Elliott. He's not going to stop doing what he's always done, and that's hurting people. Five on your side investigators discovered it's a history dating back to Newberry's teenage years. At 16, found delinquent for causing serious physical harm. At 19, charged with murder. A detective at the time already noting the teen's, quote, history of violence. That case was later dismissed. In 2017, records show Newberry pleaded guilty to carrying a concealed weapon and drug charges. A and twice in the last update. two years, charged with beating the mother of his child. Court records show those cases were tossed out after the victim didn't show up for court. And now charged with murder and on the run. Elliot believes Newberry is still in the Cleveland area. He says investigators are following leads, but he believes someone out there knows where Newberry is hiding. More than likely, he thinks he's going to be able to run and get away. Um, he's not, and it doesn't matter where he runs to or where he tries to hide. No matter what state it's in, we are going to get him, and uh, we're going to stay on this until we do apprehend him. Tonight, there is a $10,000 reward being offered for information in this case. 
Reporting live downtown, I'm five on your side investigator Scott Knoll. Is this tonight the manhunt continues for an accused killer? Ronald Newberry is charged with shooting a teen year old girl in the head and burning her father alive. Five on your side investigator Scott Knoll live outside the federal courthouse where U.S. Marshal. Let me try. I was trying to get it to stop. There we go. So let me get this uh, next video for you guys. And we're almost done. And then we'll wrap this up. Where is my video at? Hold on. Details. Nope, that's not it. Here it is. So this, this is what we'll do. Let me just manually pull them over. Hold on just a second. Since this thing don't want to find where I set my videos at. So let's go here, let's go here, here, boom. All right, now. A heartbreaking update tonight on two burned bodies found inside of a car in East Cleveland. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Mike Brookbank. Police now confirming a man and his 14-year-old daughter were tortured and killed before the car they were in was lit on fire. It's a story that's hard to hear. Police say whoever killed Paul and Paris Bradley woke them while they were in their beds in the middle of the night, torturing the 14-year-old girl before shooting her in the head. Investigators also telling us her father was alive, bound in the trunk when the car was set on fire. They discovered the burning car, a rental, Wednesday, sitting in a vacant lot in East Cleveland. Police say they were able to trace the rental papers back to Bradley's home in Bedford, where detectives found the back door open and say there was evidence of a struggle. Neighbors telling News 5 that they could smell gasoline coming from the home. Meantime, a makeshift memorial now sits where the father and daughter were found on Savannah Avenue. Police aren't providing any details yet about why this happened. Of course, stick with News 5 and our app for the latest on this developing and we begin tonight with and again the motive is the fact that this was a robbery this was a foiled robbery with new details on the two burned bodies found in a car in east cleveland earlier this week they have now been identified as paul bradley and his 14 year old daughter paris our ray strickland is live at the east cleveland police department with what else we are learning certainly a difficult story tonight ray Andrew, to be honest, the more we know about this, the more heartbreaking it gets. The 14-year-old girl, Paris, we've learned, was a freshman student at Bedford High School. She was loved by all mates, and of course, all of them are shocked by what happened. Her father, we spoke to a next-door neighbor who lived next door to him, and he says that her father was a good man and a good neighbor, and he says no one deserves what happened to them. But Paul Bradley and his daughter, Paris, their bodies were found in that burned car on Wednesday morning in East Cleveland. That same day, police, hours later, were searching a home in Bedford. We learned then it was Bradley's house and that he had rented the car him and his daughter were discovered in. Now, at this our police can y'all look at that and y'all mean to tell me that they thought that this guy was loaded with money enough to rob and kill them this house seriously foiled 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 robbery not fold foiled robbery james it was a foiled robbery daughter were discovered in. Now, at this hour, police confirming details on what happened before they were found miles away in Bedford. Police tell us the father and her and daughter, excuse me, were forced from their beds. We've been told Paris was tortured. Exactly. They don't look rich to me. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm not trying to discredit their home or anything like that. But it does not. I mean, Danielle or anybody that lives out there in Ohio, anybody. If you guys are familiar with this story, y'all tell me if this neighborhood is a rich and well-off neighborhood. And her father's- Or is Cleveland just really that broke? Hands and feet were tied up. Investigators also say her father was alive at the time when the car was set on fire. Paris, they say, was likely already dead. We spoke to a next door neighbor who got choked up about the news. You know, horrible. Wow, thank you. I love that you said that. Sha Five said a father was killed by fatherless Negroes. Sha Five, after this video is over, when I end this video, if you will repost that comment in my comment section, I will ping your comment for what you just said. I love that. That sums this entire thing up. A father killed by fatherless Negroes. That sums up my whole story. Horrible. 
Me and my wife couldn't sleep all night because just think. Bedford is a suburb. <laughs> wow. If that's the suburbs, then damn. It don't look that well. I, I'm sorry, but it don't. It don't look that well off to me. Thinking about the girl. It, you know, broke us up. Mm. And it was next door. Next door. Next door. It's It's tragic. As you would imagine, the community is taking this hard. Parents of the uh, of friends of the little girl, they're really concerned about what happened. Police, they're continuing to work uh, work uh, work on who uh, did this to them, uh, but so far, no suspects have been arrested. True. It's just awful. What are they doing? Investigation into a woman's body found inside a burned-out car in Gwinnett County leads police to a Johns Creek apartment complex. Nope, nope. That's not the one. That's not the one. So let's go ahead and cut it right there. That's that's definitely not the video. That is the wrong video. But the one that we played earlier was definitely the correct the, the correct one. <clears throat> so we'll just leave it right there. Again, this is the, the father and daughter right there. Let me go back to that photo. Right there. That's the father. That's the daughter. That's Paris Bradley and her father. A father was murdered by fatherless fatherless men isn't that crazy 300 likes i'm happy with that we've done well man i appreciate that we crossed over the threshold of 400 and something watching here 